in general, if you're given a system of equations, of differential equations, and you have a vector field, and that vector field depends on all of its inputs, then typically solving something like this is uh, very, very difficult. Um, there are only certain instances where it's sort of relatively simple to solve such differential equations, one of which is when v, the vector fields, are all linear. In this case, there's an explicit solution in terms of the exponential of an operator or the exponential of a matrix. Uh, however, instead of going down that route, which we will eventually at some point, let's instead consider a different situation, which is the following. Suppose there exists a very special function, something that's constant during the motion of this trajectory. So for example, think, thinking physically speaking, if you have a closed system that's not being perturbed from the outside, then the energy of a system is typically a constant. And depending on certain symmetries, there are other things that are constants as well, such as the momentum, the angular momentum, and sometimes the things that are constant during a motion are maybe not so obvious, but it's very often helpful when such a thing exists. So suppose that there exists a function, let's call it i, is a function satisfying the condition that for any integral curve gamma of v, and I don't really care about which point it's going through, for any integral curve gamma, if I evaluate the function i on gamma for all t, t in the domain of this curve, then this is constant for all t in the domain of gamma. So if I have such a function and it satisfies the condition that for any integral curve, then it's constant. And I don't mean that this number is the same, so whatever number this is, that it's a constant, that this number equals the same as it would for another integral curve. I don't mean that, I just mean that for a given integral curve, then this is constant for all time. Then i is said to be a constant of the motion, or sometimes also equivalently, another name for this is um, i.e an integral of the motion. And it's a theorem, the Hamiltonian is a constant of the motion for the vector field, for the vector field associated to it. So for the Hamiltonian vector field, associated to it. Now, imagine that we have that n is quite small. Let's say it's 3. If n is 3 and I found such a constant of the motion, what this is saying is, is that so here's, here's like a picture of R3, and I have some constant of the motion here, so I have some function from R3 to R. And pick any value that is attained for this function. So let's say I pick some value C. And look at the inverse image of this um, function. So the inverse image, so look at the set of all uh, let's call it, so this is i, so it's i inverse of c. And i inverse of c is going to be a collection of points in R3, in this case, whose image under i is c. 
Now, it could be all of our, it could, you know, this, the set of points could be the entire space, it could be weird subsets, it could be fractals, uh, could be a whole bunch of things. And later in the semester, we'll actually prove a theorem that says if i is differentiable and c is sort of a special value known as a regular value for this function, then the inverse image of i inverse c will actually be a manifold. So it'll have a lot of nice, interesting properties. And visually speaking, what that means is that it'll be some kind of a surface or a line or a curve in R3, or it could be a, an open domain in R3, or something like that. So we map out some kind of a surface. Let me just, for visual purposes, draw kind of a donut here. And the fact that this is a constant of the motion tells us that if I have any curve that passes through a point on this subset, then that entire curve lies on this entire subset. So what a constant of the motion does is it reduces a problem for us. It reduces the problem of calculating n differential equations in n variables to calculating differential equations of fewer variables, but the complication arises that these fewer variables might sweep out sort of a non-trivial domain. And what happens is that the vector field associated to this differential equation will restrict to these surfaces and we'll see that if we have a vector field we have a constant of the motion and we can talk about the vector field associated to this we can look at the vector fields associated to these surfaces and the fact that these curves remain on these surfaces sort of indicate that these vectors are somehow attached to these surfaces so one other important fact is this is if the dimension was quite low. We can visualize what's going on. Our curves sort of lie on lower dimensional spaces, lower dimensional subsets of the uh, space that we started in. So now imagine that you have a huge system, Avogadro number of particles, and you want to solve a system of differential equations. It might seem impossible. The best thing that you can often hope for is finding such constants of the motion. And it's very rare to find enough so that you lower the dimensions very severely so that you can solve it explicitly, but these give you an idea of how the system evolves.